Hello and welcome. This is Christina Hills from the Website Creation Workshop and welcome to this training on the top 10 plugins every website needs and why. And um, if you've never met me before, again my name is Christina Hills and I have been teaching WordPress since 2008 in my flagship program, the Website Creation Workshop. And um, I love teaching. I love teaching non-techie entrepreneurs, coaches, consultants, speakers, authors, business owners, artists, musicians, doctors, all kinds of folks how to create their websites. And I've been doing that in the Website Creation Workshop. Uh, before I was an online trainer, I worked in the visual effects industry. I was a visual effects artist working for George Lucas at Industrial Light and Magic. Uh, I worked on, some of the films I worked on were Star Wars, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, and Jurassic Park. And this is my uh, IMDB page for that. And here's just a few screenshots of the movies that I worked on. Uh, this is um, Jurassic Park 2 and this was one of the shots I did and my job was to take the dinosaur and put it in the live action scene and have the smoke go over it and the red light reflect on it and that was a lot of fun and then Star Wars uh, Episode 1 I worked on as well. So we are talking about WordPress websites today and if you don't yet have a WordPress website, you can join my foundation WordPress course. Just email support at WebsiteCreationWorkshop.com if you want to get into that. Let them know that you were on this webinar with me. All right, so we're talking about websites, right? And your website's made up of pages, and this is kind of common. You got a home page, maybe your programs page, your products, about us, a contact us, and maybe a blog. So your programs, maybe you do group coaching or you do personal consultations, or maybe they're products. That would kind of go into this category. And then blog, a blog is optional where you have various articles. I email out a lot about my blog posts. And so here's just my site. That's the home page. This is my programs page, my about us page, my contact us, and then that's a screenshot of my blog. So WordPress has eight main components and I'm going to show you what these look like. We're going to be focusing on plugins today. So eight main components of WordPress. This is a screenshot from inside a WordPress site. This should look familiar if you're used to using WordPress. So this is the pages area. This is the posts, the blog posts area. There's menus. This is the menus area. I know I'm going through this quickly just to give you this fast overview. Your media library, it's where you store all your images and your PDFs and audios, any other media. Plugins, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Widgets, and I have an example of widgets. I'll be talking about what widgets are in case you don't know. Themes, those are the design of your site. And then users are the people who can log in to your WordPress site. So today we are focusing on plugins today. All right, so what are WordPress plugins in case you don't remember or never knew? Uh, plugins are like adding apps to your phone. So when you get a phone, this is a picture of an iPhone, it could be a droid, it doesn't really matter. The phone comes out of the box with certain software. But then you can add plugins on, you can add apps on to make your phone work custom to you, forever, whatever you want to do. So plugins can be fun, like visible effects. 
um, and sometimes they're fun and sometimes they're just visible effects. So plugins can be visible like you see it or they can be a behind the scenes function. So here are a couple of examples. Falling snow, right, during the holidays. It's nice to have, sometimes I put up falling snow, that would be a visible effect. Uh, here's another visible effect is a gallery plugin. This is the Foo Gallery plugin and it just or organizes and displays your images in a certain certain way. Then behind the scenes are like backup plugins or plugins to speed up your site. So I'm going to be talking about that. So when there are over 58,000 plugins, right? We're at this is a screenshot of WordPress. 58,000 plugins, right? How do you choose? How do you know which of the 58,000 you should use? All right, I'm going to take this little poll. Do you know how to install a WordPress plugin? That's okay if you don't. It's okay. Yes, I've installed many plugins. Yes, I think I know how to install a plugin, or no, I don't know how to install a plugin. And again, today's training is more for people who have a WordPress site, but you should be able to follow along. And if you want to get into my foundational class, just um, email support after the webinar today. All right, I think I'll close the poll and I'll share the results. So about a third of you know how, 25% uh, think you know how, and 46% don't know how. So that, that, that is quite, that is quite all right. So I do want you to stay with me till the end where you can ask questions. So now I'm going through the presentation and then at the end I can go through and, we, and you can ask questions. All right, so let's step through my top 10 list of easy WordPress plugins every website needs. So I picked out the ones that were easy to understand, easy to work with, and um, easy to use. So here we go. My first one is search engine optimization, SEO, SEO. So what is SEO? It is, stands for search engine optimization. Um, many people think of Google. You go to Google to run a search. Although WordPress is already very search engine friendly, there are things that you can do to boost your SEO, right? That's the shorthand for search engine optimization results without needing to hire an SEO expert. So I'm all about being able to do things yourself without having to hire a tech. All right, so the plugin I recommend is called Yoast SEO. Uh, you may have already heard of it. It improves your search engine optimization and it makes you a better writer. This is the part I really like about it. It helps you become a better writer. It can be used for breadcrumbs and it creates a special uh, map for Google. So it creates this behind the scenes thing for Google to help crawl and search your site. So even if you don't wanna SEO your site, some people don't wanna be found in the search engines for various reasons, it will make you a better writer. So let's uh, look on the inside. So right now I am on the inside and let me just pause. Am I going too fast or is the pacing good? Just type in the chat. Am I going too fast or is the pacing good? Just want to get an idea. Okay, most people say it's good. Okay, good. Okay, good. And again, at the end, during the questions, I can go back and answer questions. So just write down questions as you have them. So where am I? I am, this is a screenshot. I'm inside WordPress 
and in this section is the Yoast SEO and it will just show you how your uh, article will look if somebody did a Google search and it was if it were to show up so um, Yoast SEO helps with readability so I'm, I'm kind of focusing on the readability now because it's everybody needs you know it's it's nice to give for the plugin to give you tips to make it more readable for example in this screenshot it said the text contains four consecutive sentences starting with the same word try to mix things up so that's kind of nice and then transition words only 14.5 percent of the sentences contain transition words which is not enough and then it gives you links so not only does it help you with SEO that would be on this tab it helps you with readability so this is a screenshot of inside and it's showing hey my readability is okay I could make it better and my SEO is already very good so kind of like the game you know red light green light one two three right you want you want these to be green right so you want all these little dots to be green and um, that is what Yoast does and I do go deeper into this in the website marketing workshop which I will be talking about um, at the end all right so plugin number two is about cloning cloning your pages so cloning is copying a page or a post so um, this was a blog post I did on my simple truth free webinar and instead of typing it all again and getting all the formatting in I just cloned it for this one so I just cloned the page so it just saves you a ton of time with not having to rewrite something right this will speed things up and uh, duplicate post is the name of it and then the Yoast company bought it so now it's called Yoast duplicate post so it will with a click of the button duplicates your pages or posts into a new draft for you it saves you the time of copying over your content when you want to create a new page or a blog post so for example if maybe you have a portfolio page uh, for to show off for your clients and uh, of the work you do and then what you can do is when you get a new client and you want to add your work to your portfolio you can just duplicate it so this is a really powerful easy plugin once you install it and, and I will be talking about evaluating plugins so once you install it I'm, I'm inside the editor you click over to copy to a new draft and it duplicates it and then you can then edit the new version so we do that I do that all the time we take a page like for one of our webinars if we're doing another webinar we just duplicate the last one and make a few changes so it saves you a lot of time really easy to use you just activate it and then you get this copy to a new draft all right so that was number two and now we are moving on to number three which is redirection redirection so what is redirection redirection is where sometimes you have a page and you instead of wanting people to go to the page you want them to jump over to another page so that's what uh, redirection does so if they type in one so for example uh, this is not live now but it's just an example if someone were to type in this when we're doing a promo it redirects to our registration page so it just jumps them over and um, there are a couple of plugins that will do this one is called redirection the 
let's see. Sorry, I lost my spot. Okay, this one is called redirection or quick page post redirect. They both do the same thing. This one is faster and it's a little bit more popular. So they both do the same thing. You can pick um, this one is, how do I say it? I like this one better. I find it easier to use, but redirection has, is a, has more people using it. So this is the stronger one. Anyway, they both work the same. So here's another example. Let's say you have an affiliate link. So I have an affiliate link for the plugin called Gravity Forms. I'll be talking about that. So what it does is when you type this in, it redirects to another URL. So redirection is great if you've got a long, crazy URL and you want to make it something simple. So here's an example of the quick page post redirect. You just tell it where you want it to go and then when someone types the link in, then it goes ahead and it redirects. Now you might be thinking, well, Christine, I don't really need have the need for redirect. That's fine. Maybe in the future you might need it. Um, we do it all the time. So for example, let's say you're, I'm running a sale and instead of uh, changing everything about the sale on the sale page, instead I just put a redirect on into uh, the sale is over. So that's redirection. All right, widgets. Let's hide some widgets. Let's hide some widgets. Do you know what a widget is? Let's see, do you know what a widget is? I like to take these polls. I'm gonna explain what it is, but I just wanna know if you already know. So either yes, I use widgets a lot, yes, I think so, or no, I'm not exactly sure what a widget is. All right, I think I will. Most of you have voted. Just click on the screen to vote before I close the poll. Yeah, Marlon, I like the polls too. Um, all right, I'm going to close the poll and share the results. So uh, about 46% don't know what it is, 11% uh, use them a lot, 43 kind of think so. All right, I'm going to explain what a widget is. So widgets or, or widget areas, let's start with widget areas. Widget areas are like shelves in a bookcase. These are the widget areas. And the widgets are the things you put into the shelves. All right, so this, my next slide will make a little bit more sense. So on a website, you have these different areas you can use, widget areas, and you put things in them. So for example, here's a, a simple one. Um, this is a sidebar widget. And on this sidebar widget, there's one, two, three, four things in it. So the widget area, so this is the widget area, which is the sidebar, and then there's four things you can put in it. So think of it like a uh, bookshelf. Um, and you get to decide which widgets you want to hide or show on different pages. So here's a screenshot from my blog and I have a free report widget, I have a search widget, I have a connect with me on social media, I have a success stories widget, and I have um, how to update WordPress. And um, yeah, we are still on number three plugin. Oh no, we're on number four, sorry. Number four plugin, explaining what widgets are. So they're just areas on your site. And the sidebar widget is the most common. Sometimes there's footer widgets, sometimes there's header widget, header widget areas, widget areas. Anyway, let me let me 
keep going. So if you want to hide widgets on certain pages, you want to use the plugin called Widget Options. It will let you decide you want some widgets on some places and some on another. So let me just back up for a second. Maybe on a certain page you don't want your free report or you don't want the connect with me. See in a WordPress site when you put these in and say yes I want these on the sidebar they automatically show up on every page. But with widget options, you get to control where they show up. Right, so in the widgets area, so this is a screenshot of the widgets area, when you have this plugin, you then in each widget have the option to hide it on certain pages. So in this example, uh, on, on this page, I want to hide this widget, whatever the widget is. So I'm zooming in to the visibility section. So you click on the visibility button for each widget to control its visibility. Now as you're listening to me, I know you're not going to grasp all of this. It's one of those kinesthetics things that makes more sense uh, once you're doing it but I want to um, explain the concept. And this is a free plugin, by the, by the way. So if you have this plugin added, you can say hide if page is, so you can give it certain conditions to hide it. All right, so let me, here's an example of one of my students who's an artist. And the theme she decide, she chose had what a header widget. And so what she did is on different pages, she was displaying different widget header widgets. So on this page, she was showing this one, and on this page, she was showing this other one. There are a lot of different scenarios where you can use uh, widget options. So just park that park that in your mind. All right, now I'm moving on to excluding. Excluding some pages from your site search. And most of these plugins are free. I will point out when it's a paid plugin. So just assume that they are all free and when it's um, a paid plugin, I will mention that. All right, so we're up to number five. We're up to number five, and this is about excluding pages from your site search. So most websites have a search box option, right? Not all do, but most do where you can search for something. And that's search for, searching for something within the website. But sometimes you, you, you want to hide certain pages, like a thank you page for a feedback survey, People don't need to search for that or a thank you page for a question that's been submitted. Like these are things you want to hide from the search, right? You don't, you don't want them to show up. So that's what this search exclude will do. This is the plugin for the things that you want to exclude. Really easy to use, search exclude. It lets you easily tell WordPress which pages or blog posts to exclude from your website's search results. So um, when you edit your page on the right hand side, if you've got search exclude activated, then there's a little check mark, checkbox. Right, so this is my download page for my productivity tips. I don't want people to be able to search for that and get the download page because I want them to opt in. So all I have to do is check this box. Right, so today's training is on the easy ones that every website needs, uh, should have or will want to have. And look how simple that is. You just check the box and then it won't show up. So let me just, before we go on to the next one, clarify this search thing. 
So to exclude a page or a blog post from a site search, you use the search exclude plugin. To exclude a page or a post from a Google search, you'd use the Yoast SEO plugin and you can have both. So I'm hoping that that makes sense. So the search exclude is when you have your own search box and people are searching within your site. Yoast SEO, if for some reason you don't want people to search and find your download page, you tell Google with the Yoast SEO, exclude this page from search results. All right, number six, we are up to forms on your website. Many people have forms. Uh, although a lot of themes include a contact form, uh, form plugins often go way beyond what the themes can do. So some themes have this built in where you can have a contact us. And, um, but the form plugin that I want to recommend is Gravity Forms. This is a paid plugin. It is not a free plugin, it is a paid plugin. And the reason why I recommend it, usually I recommend free plugins. The reason why I recommend this one is it is so easy to use that I don't ever have to read any documentation. It's that easy. There are other free ones and you can look for them, but I think this one is worth the price because it is so easy to use. And yes, again, there are free uh, alternatives. And when I get to how to evaluate a plugin, you'll, you'll see more about that. So, um, and it has conditional logic, which I hope is not going to sound too mathy to you. Um, but I don't know if I have a page for that. So, uh, yes, I do. I have a screenshot for that. Okay, inside Gravity Forms, there's a whole Forms section, and this is where you would build your form. And um, it has conditional logic, meaning show this field on my form if these other conditions happen. So, for example, if... Um, if somebody said yes to a question, then the next question you, um, you can ask another question. So it's basically the best WordPress forms plugin. Now here are two free ones. They are also good. Uh, Ninja forms and Caldera forms. They're both good. Uh, I can recommend both of them. These are free. These are free ones. And the free ones are at wordpress.org. And uh, the cost of um, Gravity Forms, you can find it at christinasresources.com forward slash Gravity Forms. I don't remember. It's an annual fee. You, you pay once or you may be able to buy the annual, um, the lifetime. They probably have a lifetime. I don't remember the cost. It's not that expensive. All right, and then these are the two free ones. Okay, we're up to number seven, and this one really only applies to people who have an old site. So it's called Automatically Fixing SSL Issues. And you're like, man, Christina, that's a mouthful. What are you talking about? So let me explain what I'm talking about. And this, again, really only applies to old sites. If you were starting a site now, it wouldn't apply, but it applies if you've had a site around for a while. So when you type HTTP colon, it's not secure versus HTTPS is secure. So depending upon your browser, and this keeps changing over time, you might see a green lock or you might see a black lock, but when you see the lock, it means your site is secure. If you don't see the lock, your site is not secure. So how do you get it to be secure? That's part of your hosting company. So if you've got a WordPress site, call your hosting company and they can help you out. 
If you don't have a WordPress site, this is one of the things that I help you with in my foundation website creation workshop. So let me keep explaining. So this lock thing will display a warning because something in your site is not secure. So that's what this little warning is. Something is not secure, meaning when you built the site, there was no HTTPS, and in the code it says HTTP, right? So it doesn't have this in the code, so just look for this. So this plugin, really simple SSL, it's free, and you turn it on, and what it does is it fixes any of those little yellow locks. So it fixes anything inside your site that is not secure. So it, you don't have to do much, you basically turn it on. Um, but if you are starting a new site, right, so this only applies to old sites. If you're starting a brand new site, then you don't need this. So for my website creation workshop uh, students in my current class, you're building brand new sites, you don't need this plugin. It's only old plugins. So secure from what? It's just some browsers will warn you that there's something insecure. And you want, the browsers want websites to have everything be secure coming from a secure location. I'm trying not to get too techy, but if you see something, see up my screen, if you see something like that, it means it's not secure. Anyway, this really, it's a free plugin. It's uh, easy to use, but it only applies if you've had a WordPress site for a very long time. I almost took this off of my top 10, but I decided to leave it in. So check with your hosting company to make sure your site is SSL, right? So just, and if, if this is still Greek to you, what I'm saying, if you already have a WordPress site, just call or chat with them and say, is my site SSL? Please help me make it SSL and it should be free. Don't pay hundreds of dollars. It should be something free that your hosting company does for you. Okay, I hope that section wasn't too techy. Let's move on to number eight, which is finding moldy plugins. What moldy plugins, Christina? What are you talking about? All right, a moldy plugin is a plugin that has been abandoned. So, how do you know when a plugin gets abandoned? So, here's a screenshot of going to WordPress and this plugin four years ago they updated it so that's pretty old and moldy so you without having to check all the time all your plugins how do you know and this plugin WordFence will keep your site secure and it will show you when you have outdated plugins so this is number eight. This is also a free plugin. So when you have this installed and activated and you run a scan, you run a scan, it will show you what it thinks has been abandoned. And then you might need to, um, you know, investigate further, like what's the deal? Why is this abandoned? Now this one, it's not abandoned, it just needed an upgrade, right? I just see this little orange on the left. Sometimes it just needs an upgrade. So I ran a scan and it let me know something needed an upgrade, which is just a click of the button. But it looks like these um, have been abandoned. So that's what this does really well. So you scan it. And then if it comes up with something critical, right? So I scanned it, it found a plugin I was using, and it's letting me know it has been removed, like WordPress removed that plugin. So you'll want to then delete it. So that's what WordFence is really nice for. Now let me just make a note. 
Uh, WordFence will email you and notice, notify you all the time about all kinds of stuff and sometimes it's a little too much. So just know that if you use WordFence, they're going to send you a lot of emails so you'll want to turn off some of those notifications otherwise it's too much. But some people like it, right? Like I see David in the chat is commenting that he loves it when WordFence uh, contacts him. All right, so that was number eight, finding moldy plug plugins. Number nine is about backups. Like, look at this gal. Oh no, I didn't make a backup, right? And this is like insurance. So WordPress, the software, the themes, or the plugins sometimes break during updates. And since 2008, this is probably, which is what, 14 years or something? I can't do the math in my head, 15 years. It has broken maybe two times, three times, not that often. Another instance where you might need a backup is a hacker could sneak into your site, right? A hacker could sneak in and boy, you want a backup in case your site gets hacked or some kind of act of God, um, or could just be your own mistake, like you, you just goof something up. So backups are insurance. You rarely need them, but when you do, it's important. So I want to encourage you to get a backup plugin and not just rely on your hosting's backup. So you should have your own as well. And there's a few to choose from. Um, and you can just go to wordpress.org and type, type in backups and you'll get lots of different backup plugins. Um, these are two that I like for beginners, Updraft Plus and BackWP Up. Uh, both of them are free. But I have to say I like Updraft Plus a little bit better and they have three million people using it. So when a lot of people using a plugin, that's a good sign. And the reason why I like Updraft Plus better is because it lets you do what's called as an on-demand backup, meaning, wow, I'm about to make a lot of changes to my site. Let me run a backup now before I make all these changes. So that's on-demand where you click the button. And so um, Updraft Plus is free. Uh, there's another plugin and system called Manage WP. And this is really useful if you have a lot of websites. If you just have one website, you can use Updraft Plus. But if you have a lot, like I do, then I have this system. They have a free version and a paid version. And so instead of logging into each website, I just log into this one command central and I can back everything up and up do updates. So that's called Manage uh, WP. So they have free and paid plans. So this is, again, better if you've got lots of sites. If you don't have lots of sites, if you just have one or maybe two, you might just stick with Updraft Plus. All right, so that was number nine. Coming around the corner to number 10 of my top 10 is speeding things up. And you can speed up your website by caching it. All right, so what is caching? Type in the chat, do you know what caching is? Do you know what caching is? Yes, it's, uh, some are saying no, some are saying yes. Caching, and I forget what it stands for. It's a way to store a snapshot of your website. So this is like a snapshot of the scenery, and so that's what caching does. It takes a snapshot of your site so that when people go to your site, it's, um, um, serving up the store. So um, Lawrence is pointing out cache is like a store of food. Yeah, it stores 
It's a stored snapshot of your site. So when people go to your site, if your site hasn't changed since yesterday, they can look at the stored snapshot. They don't need the browser to re-render the thing. Hopefully this makes sense. All right, my favorite one is WP Rocket, and you can find that at christinasresources.com forward slash WP dash Rocket. It's a paid plugin, but it works so well. Like I never had to read documentation. I never had to do anything. I bought it, installed it, turned it on, and I forgot about it. I really like this one. It is really much faster than the others, but here are a couple of free ones. Auto Optimize and W3 Total Cache. So these are two free ones. I I was not a believer. A friend was like, you got to get WP Rocket. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to pay money. I don't want to pay money. Finally, I'm like, okay, I'll buy it. And it really did speed my site up faster than these other ones. But these free ones are better than none. And depending upon your hosting company, um, some of them have caching built in. So you might want to ask them about that your hosting company if they have it built in so I know everybody has a different web hosting company all right so here's my recap of the top 10 plugins and then I'm going to move on to how to evaluate a plugin so the first one was the Yoast SEO plugin the second was duplicating your posts duplicate posts also Duplicates, duplicates pages. Redirection, which is sending people from one page to another. Widget options, which was turning options, widgets on and off, depending upon what you want. Uh, search exclude, excluding uh, certain pages when people are using the search box on your site. Uh, gravity forms for forms, that was a paid one. Really simple SSL, this really only applies to if you've got an old website. Brand new sites don't need it. Uh, WordFence for finding moldy plugins. Uh, Updraft Plus or Manage WP for doing backups in addition to whatever your hosting company does. And then a caching plugin to speed up your site and WP Rocket is what I uh, recommend. All right, do you know how to evaluate a plugin? Do you know how to evaluate a plugin? That's what I'm about to teach you is how to evaluate. And again, when we get to the Q&A, I'll be answering uh, questions during the um, Q&A. All right, um, half of you have voted. Just click on the screen. I like to get an, enough. I guess enough of you have voted. I want to keep this moving along. So I'm going to close the poll and share the results. So some of you look for plugins all the time, but most of you don't know how to evaluate. And that's what I was expecting. So um, that's what I'm about to teach you. All right, so now are my quick steps to evaluate any plugin. So these plugins are like these little robots that help you on your site. That's what we've been talking about, but we're going to talk about how to evaluate. So there are two ways to find a plugin. So one is inside your WordPress site in the admin dashboard. And the other way is to go to wordpress.org, right? So that you just go to the website wordpress.org and you can evaluate, you click on the plugins and you can evaluate them. So whether you look for a plugin inside your WordPress admin or if you go to wordpress.org, they are the same. See that equal sign? They are the same. They're the same plugins. They're the free plugins that have been vetted by the WordPress company. So uh, this is a question. 
not not a poll. So just type in, do you ever go to wordpress.org? Do you ever go there? You can just type in yes or no. It's okay if it's a no. Just kind of curious if you ever go there. All right, we got uh, we we got a lot of yeses and a lot of nos. So great. So the best way to evaluate a plugin is by going to WordPress.org and use their search if you have a plugin in mind what you're looking for. That is the best way. So for example, let's say you hear, oh, Foo Gallery is a good gallery plugin. Type in Foo Gallery. This will pop up and then you'll see it on WordPress Dot org and I'm going to walk you through what to look for. Okay, and then here's the little description. So you you find a plugin you're thinking about or you heard of. You go to WordPress.org, and these are the things you want to look at. And this process I'm teaching you should take you only five minutes. Right, that's the intention. So the first is when was it last updated? Okay, the time I took this screenshot, it had updated three weeks ago. That's really good. You don't want it to say last updated four years ago. Then how many active installations? That means how many people are using it? So this has over a hundred thousand. That's a good sign. Lots of people are using it. And then test it up to, um, you want to have it tested up to the most recent version of WordPress. And the time I took this screenshot, this is a little bit of an older version. But for the purpose of the training, it is fine. Uh, then you want to look, right? So that's like, okay, three weeks ago. Okay, that looks good. Then you want to look at the star ratings. I'm not saying you have to read all the ratings. Just take a glance. Just take a glance. This one has mostly five star ratings and some four, three, twos, and ones. You know, there's always going to be the complainers that want to complain. But if the majority give it good ratings, that's a good sign. Again, you don't have to read it all. Then the support forum just wants you to click there quickly. Again, you don't have to read the support forum everything. You just want to see how active is it. So this screenshot, um, 42 minutes, this one is a read first, so ignore that it's a year. But here's these others, last two hours, 10 hours, one day. If you look at a support forum and it says two years, a year, if it's really old, that means that plugin <clears throat> is not really being attended to. So again, you don't have to read everything. You just want to know how active is it. And do they have videos and demos, right? So do they have videos? Do they have demos? Have they put effort into it? And so you want to glance at their demos and documentation like, OK, they've got demos. They've got documentation. They're putting effort into this plugin. And this is key. Do they have a pro version? If the plugin has a pro version, meaning a professional paid version, then that lets you know they're serious about it and they're making money. So um, uh, one of the questions that is commonly asked is how do these developers fund their plugin to remain free? And it's because the pro version pays for the free. All right, so think of it like when you um, went to the mall or used to go to the mall and you walk through the food court and they'd have somebody standing there, this is before COVID, standing there giving you a free sample, right? And you'd taste the sample and you'd be like, mmm, yummy, I think I'll buy that food at the mall. That's what the free version is. The free version lets you sample what this plugin is like and then if you want all the features you get the pro and um, the pricing is all over the map this is just one example 
So if they have a pro version, that's a very good sign. That means they're serious about supporting their plugin. But just because they have a pro version does not mean you have to purchase it, right? I purchase very few plugins. Very few plugins do I buy. But I like to know there's a pro version. So for example, Yoast SEO, I still am using the free version. I've not personally found a need for the pro version. Pro version I'm sure is very good, but again, it doesn't mean you have to buy the pro version. All right, so you got a WordPress site, and that's what we've been talking about. But is it helping you to market your business? So you're in the right place if you just know that you should be doing more with your WordPress website, but you're not really sure what to do. And you're in the right place for what I'm going to talk about now if you already have a WordPress site. So I want to talk to you now about the Website Marketing Workshop. There are seven modules. You can start where you most need it. You get 24-7 access. We do two live coaching webinars a month. All the webinars are recorded and you can download the replay. I have an extensive video library of trainings and you can get answers to your questions about your business and your website and we have a Facebook group for community support. So I want to talk about the different modules in my course. So um, refresh and renew. If you don't like your current theme design you can switch to a new one. If your WordPress site is out of date I'll teach you how to uh, evaluate the settings for your plugins. If your site is not SSL secure, I'll teach you how to make it SSL secure and how to clean out old abandoned themes and plugins and broken stuff that a developer would be charging you big bucks for. Uh, another module we have is the content creation module. How often should you blog and how long should your blog posts be? How to develop a habit and system for creating content and later for sharing on social media. How to find and add inspiring images and videos to your blog posts. Uh, then we have a social media module. In this module you'll discover how to get more social followers when people visit your site with easy to add social media buttons. How to know which social media sites to use and which you can ignore. How to get people to share your articles, blog posts, and ideas across the web with easy to add sharing buttons. Uh, the next module is growing your email list. So in this module you'll discover email marketing explained simply and demystified, how to easily add stylish email sign-up boxes anywhere on your site, step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up any email marketing system with your new sign-up boxes. Then the SEO module to get found on Google, Bing, etc. How to write articles that will make you show up higher in Google. How to optimize any page or blog post for Google rankings. And simple adjustments and plugins to use on your site that will help improve your rankings. Then we have a module for selling from your website. I know not everybody wants to, but some do. How to, easily, how to add easy payment buttons to your site. You can use PayPal, Stripe, or Amazon, or any shopping cart you like. And you can do this in just minutes with no techie skills required. Then we have a track and analyzing your site module. How to add Google Analytics to your dashboard. The, how to add a Google Analytics dashboard to your WordPress site, how to understand what's happening on your site so you know what people are doing, and how you can improve your website to make it more sticky. So a sticky website is a website that people stay on. So you want people to stay longer so they convert from prospects to customers. So the Website Marketing Workshop is this um, kind of, I, I like to explain it in this circle. 
Um, you update and refresh, you create content, you leverage social media, you build an email list, you get traffic to the search engines, you sell online, and you track your stats. So this program is not a linear, it's more of a circular program because maybe you come in and you really want to refresh and update your site and then you want to create some content but then you want to get traffic from search engines or then see you can go in any order that you want. Um, we do two group coaching webinars monthly so you can bring your questions you have about marketing your website and get coaching help directly from me and my expert trainers I bring on. You can attend live or listen later. You can submit questions ahead of time. You do not have to be there uh, live for the webinars. And everything is recorded and stored in our online members area. Uh, for those of you who like Facebook, we have a private Facebook community uh, where you can share your site and get support from other members in the community where me and my coaches will give you feedback and you can stay on top of important trends. So let me show you some student success stories. Uh, this gal, Maureen Whitehouse, she's an Echo Spiritual, uh, author on Echo Spiritual Nutrition. She said, before discovering Christina, I spent thousands of dollars on websites that were more like placeholders and obsolete. And they never, before they ever got up fully running, so we'd have to scrap them and start over again after years of work. To say the least, it was disheartening because my work is so vital to the health and well-being of those in the throes of life transitions, crisis, and challenges, and I want to share it as widely and effectively as possible. Doing so online just wasn't working for me, so this is one of her sites, and she continues on. I would have never known about the gems like the WordPress Divi theme if it weren't for Christina. Now it makes up the core of my three websites, an online course and a membership site. So this is her other site, Soulful Eating. Christina's clear, calm teaching approach makes grasping website creation not only possible but inspiring. She is an absolute breath of fresh air in the world of online marketing. You feel heard, respected, and supported right where you're at wherever that is while learning from her. So that was Maureen. Uh, this is Leah Hoffpair and she is an artist and she said Christina Hill's website marketing workshop offered me an opportunity to realize my dream. It has always been my dream to write and share stories of my photographs that I shot while traveling the world. Christina Hills' website marketing workshop offered me an opportunity to realize this dream. And um, through this incredible process of learning to market my website, I've been able to reach and dialogue with so many wonderful people. The classes were thorough, well explained, and her customer support people were always ready to help. When I finished the program, I was confident in maintaining and marketing my website. There always seems to be a way to have access to any information you need through her support programs. I cannot thank Christina Hills and her team enough for helping me accomplish something that seemed so unattainable two years ago. And then Lauren, who has a reflexology online training and certification, she says, I love how Christina Hills always keeps me up to date on the latest trends and technologies for WordPress in the website marketing workshop. And the biggest thing is that she really wants us to succeed. She and her team stay on top of things and makes sure everyone is taken care of. I've been learning from her for years and she always has a new fresh approach to things that helps keep my business and websites running smoothly. And that is Lauren. And then Sally Stone, uh, her success story, she's an author and a coach. She says, Christina Hills has been my go-to mentor for building my own website since 2012. 
Her trainings have empowered me to maintain control over my own website, which has been crucial to updating my website in a timely, affordable manner. When I was ready for my business to expand and take advantage of the modern and very real need to have social media, email marketing, SEO, and appointment tools better organized and managed, I managed on my website, I took Christina's website marketing workshop. The result for me has been a complete website makeover that I'm really proud of. And one of the bonuses is online appointment booking. So if you want to book your clients online, in this module you'll discover how to take appointments right on your website using an easy to install plugin. Uh, why you should use this for both paying clients and potential new clients and how this will save time for you and make your clients happier uh, in the sales process. And here's Sally, she installed the um, booking online so when you go to her site you can schedule a time for a call. So none of the back and forth that takes up a lot of time. Uh, there's also a bonus is that is the Divi theme training. So if you want to use the Divi theme, I have extensive training on how to use it. And um, it's, a, it's a theme, it's a paid theme, it's a bonus. Um, it has a lot of visuals, it's very modern looking, and uh, I use it a lot, but you don't have to use this theme to be in the website marketing workshop. And one of my new bonuses is a Linktree Divi layout. So I have developed a Linktree layout. You can use it for your social media. You can modify it any way you want. You can download the template and use it on any of your websites. This is a screenshot of my Linktree. And if you're scratching your head and wondering, well, what is a Linktree? It's something very common that people do in Instagram. Uh, they also do it in uh, Twitter. So in Instagram, you can only have one live link. Nothing is clickable on Instagram. So people put in what is called a link tree, and a link tree has important links to the important parts of your site. So it's like a condensed version of your website and then you can add it into your social media. You see I've added it here and here, and this is a bonus if you want it. It's a bonus for all my Website Marketing Workshop students. Uh, here's Jamie Derner's before and after. This was her site before, and here's her after. And she said, I came to Christina's program at a critical time in my business when I was making big shifts wanting to upgrade my websites. Through the program modules and the monthly Q&A sessions, I found a fabulous new theme. She's happening to use Divi and learned how to use it with great results. She provides a wealth of information answering all questions I didn't even realize I had. Best of all, she breaks down the complexity of everything website oriented into manageable steps. And then here is Michelle Anderson's so she had a WordPress site, but she really didn't know how to manage it. And then she um, got it up to date here. And she said, I just wanted to make a post here and share how impressed I am with your website. And I used to call it the Website Transformation Workshop. It's now called the Website Marketing Workshop. So far, I've only made it through the refresh module, but I've jumped around to check out different things including looking at this Facebook forum. I can tell you are passionate about teaching this topic. And so far, everything has been so well and thoroughly explained. It's truly refreshing to have the step-by-step -step instruction when you are someone who doesn't know much about WordPress or how to create or maintain a website. And you know, my website went through, this is the transformation that I went through. So as you as you have a site over the years, you're going to like want a new want a new look to your site. Uh, let me tell you about my guarantee. So this is a membership program, 
is 100% guaranteed. I'm so confident in the Website Marketing Workshop, and I know if you follow the steps and do the work, you'll have a truly transforming experience marketing your site. And just to back that up, we'll give you the first 30 days to decide if my teaching methods are for you. If you decide this program's not for you, just let us know by email within 30 days and you'll get a 100% refund of your first payment. And then after 30 days, you can cancel at any time, right? So, so it's a monthly membership, you pay uh, monthly. So in the Website Marketing Workshop, you want to go to WebsiteMarketingWorkshop.com. We'll go there in a minute and you'll get the seven modules, start where you need it. You got 24-7 access, two live coaching webinars a month. Um, all webinars are recorded and ready for downplay. Some of those webinars are expert calls. Get answers to questions about your business and your website and the Facebook group for community support. So how much could outsourcing cost? Well, custom design could cost you 10 grand or more. A uh, new website with an off-the-shelf theme, if you hire a designer, could cost you 5000 And webmasters typically charge 100 bucks a month just to update and back up and maintain your site. And changes and edits and new work are just slow and very costly. So this is Kathy Avacoli, and she uh, sells her jewelry online. Uh, she said that once my beautiful website went live, I was a little sad because it was so much fun to build. But I'm so glad that Christina offers this continuing support education in her website marketing workshop. There's so much more than having a great looking site. There's maintenance, security, marketing, etc. And Christina keeps you informed and up to date. It was just what I needed. Thanks, Christina. I couldn't have done it without you. So the place to go is WebsiteMarketingWorkshop.com. We are running a special. Normally it's $98 a month or $980 annually, but it is on sale for $68 a month during this special promotion, or $680 annually, and when you pay the annual, you get two months free with the annual plan. So uh, $68 versus $98, so it's a real bargain. So you'll want to go to WebsiteMarketingWorkshop.com, scroll down to the bottom, pick the monthly or annual, and I hope to see you in the program.